Welcome to Proven and Probable. Today we're having a discussion with one of the most respected names in the natural resource space as we're going to cover buying opportunities in physical precious metals and junior mining companies that merit your attention. Before we begin, allow me to warn you, our guest pulls no punches. So make sure you grab a pen, a paper, and make sure you're undisturbed. And as a reminder, Proven and Probable, the first image you see in our videos is not going to last for the duration of the interview. We're always providing visuals. And last but not least, please click the subscribe button and click the bell. Now, on to today's interview. Joining us for a conversation is Bob Moriarty, a world-renowned best-selling author and founder of 321gold and 321energy.com. Mr. Moriarty, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. It's good to be back, Maurice. Always an honor to have you join us on the program. We have several items to discuss, so let's get started. Beginning in the United States, what are your thoughts on the prospect of postponing the election because of the coronavirus? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, when, when you went through training, did they ever teach you how to throw a hand grenade? No, sir. Okay. Are you familiar with the basics? Yes, sir. You pull a pin and, and throw it as soon as you can at the, in the right direction. Okay. Now, you got it in exactly the right order. But what happens if you pull a pin and you don't let go? Well, that's not a favorable outcome. <laughs> that's an unfavorable outcome. These riots, okay, and these protests scared the hell out of me. Let me give you some numbers. 53 million Americans have lost their jobs and applied for unemployment compensation. Uh, a lot of them were getting an extra $600 a week that stops today. Mm -hmm. Okay. They were getting paid not to work, so they didn't work. Now, many of those 53 million Americans are, are not going back to work, and that includes the travel industry, it includes the airlines, it includes hotels, it includes restaurants. When the dust finally settles, Americans are going to be shocked to see how much of a change has happened since March. Now then, when you have a country with 53 million people out of work and the government stops giving them free money and there's 395 million guns in the country and the deep state has been running a three-year coup against the president. What happens if the president says, well, we don't need to vote. We got a president. <laughs> Again, the, it's not a favorable outcome. I believe that the, the loser is going to be a sore loser. What are your thoughts there? I don't think there's going to be an election. <laughs> That's a, uh, I'm shaking my head in disbelief. That's something I, I never thought I would hear coming from the United States. Well, yeah, but uh, you can look around. I mean, the strange thing is you've been interviewing me for years. And nothing that is happening is a surprise to me. It's something that I said was coming years ago. I was writing books four years ago saying we were going to have worldwide revolution. Okay, none of this is a surprise. However, the speed at which the country is decaying is shocking to me. Now, uh, let's talk about Trump. I don't like Trump. Okay, I think the man's a narcissist. I think he's a total jackass. However, we've had fools as presidents before, and we survived. But the idea of the FBI and the DOJ selecting who the president should be, that is, like, really scary. Now, somebody is paying for these rioters, okay? Uh, I hear all kinds of rumors about George Soros. Uh, there's a good chance that it's true, okay, what's going on is not an accident, it's deliberate, and it's extremely dangerous. It's something that Barbara and I saw coming 15 years ago, and that's why we left, okay? 
I have been in riots before. They are not nearly as much fun as people suggest. I, I see it as really crazy things, and uh, Trump is feeding the fire. Uh, the Democrats are feeding the fire. Schiff's really funny. Schiff just came out and said the, the rumors of Antifa being behind the riots uh, were total fiction. How stupid do these people think the American public is? But you've got a lot of people who are very angry. Uh, the whole COVID-19 thing is a total fraud. I, I sent you a, a document, okay, uh, that we're going to be posting tomorrow that's an absolutely bizarre document. And it shows that uh, HCQ, the medicine, is a not a cure, but it, it's something that, that relieves the symptoms of, of COVID-19. And uh, it's so bizarre, a group of 100 doctors got together, made a video, said, hey, uh, the, the HCQ thing is absolutely nonsense. It's political, and it, it is secure for uh, COVID-19, okay? So they fired the woman doctor who is a spokesman at, at Facebook and Twitter and, and Netscape all banned them. Now, that's really scary. I mean, we're into book burning, okay? Wow, that's scary. But uh, Hugo Salinas Price, who I, I have a lot of time for, uh, came out with the piece, and the question was, is HCQ effective against coronavirus? And he didn't come in and say, here's my opinion, Okay, what he did is he listed all the countries who were reporting deaths by the percentage use of HCQ. And the countries that used the drug had the lowest percentage death, and the countries that didn't use the drugs had the highest percentage death. That, that's pretty scary. When, when, when you have so totally politicized everything in the system, uh, the system is going to break. Now, you had, had sent me some stuff about that book, uh, Common Sense 2.0, which was a, an absolutely amazing book. Mm -hmm. That I got the, the number of 395 million guns in America. Our system is so corrupt that Judge Sullivan, in the Mike Flynn case, has decided he not only should be the judge, but he's such a good judge, he should be the prosecutor, the jury, and the executioner. Now, I, I don't care whether you like Sullivan or not. I don't care whether you like, like Flynn or not. When that happens to a society, the society is totally irretrievably broken, and you need to fix it. And the strange thing is, uh, Common Sense 2.0 says there's a simple solution. Now, I'm going to ask you an interesting question. If you could do one thing to eliminate 99% of the crime in the United States, would you do it, first of all? And second of all, how would you do it? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> I think everyone okay. would answer yes. Now, how would you do it? Well, that's an answer no one seems to have, but I believe you have yeah, no, you have no, a solution for people, somewhere here. People have got a solution for it. What is 99% of the crime in the U.S.? What is it based off of? I would say, is that the question? What is the crime? Is it burglary? Is it rape? Is it murder? Is it cheating on your taxes? Is it cheating on your wife? If that's true, Trump's in trouble. What is <laughs> well, I don't know what, what it is, but I would say that there's a, a common tie and it's financial. No. No? It's drugs. Okay. You smoke a joint, most states in the U.S., you just broke, broke the law. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most crime in the United States, 99% of it, is drug-related. Now, there's a country in the world that does not have any drug crime. 
Got any idea who that is? It's Portugal. You hear it, it's really funny. Most of the crime in the United States is drug related, okay? Even the burglaries, okay, are drug related because they're getting the most get the, the money to buy drugs. You can eliminate the whole thing literally overnight by decriminalizing drugs. Now then, which is worse, the the crime or 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 the solution? Because law enforcement would say, oh my God, we can't give people drugs. Well, that's bull. They get drugs already, okay? Let me give you a number. Do you remember what year the 18th Amendment was overturned. When, when was Prohibition ended? I'm thinking 20s, 30s. Am I way 20? off here? Yeah, you're, you're like a century off. <laughs> We're not even in 2020. What do you mean 2030s? It could be 2030s. No, no, uh, it was 1933. Well, no, no, that's, that's what I was referring to. Uh, in the 19... Nin- I'm sorry, I, I didn't say it correctly. I was referring yeah. 1920s, 1930s. Okay, so. Yeah, it's 1933 after it was selected. Okay. Now, the interesting thing was when they eliminated prohibition, violent crime dropped by 69% between 1933 and 1934. Therefore, was violent crime a function of alcohol use? Or was it a function of the prohibition laws? A function of the prohibition laws. Of course, and all you had to do is change prohibition laws. We need to wake up the United States. We need to stop letting the government, letting Fauci, let letting Bill Gates, letting all these idiots rule us, put us into absolute slavery, treat us like idiots. Let's go to Fauci for a minute. You remember when Fauci was talking about HCQ and he said nobody's done a clinical study on it and we need a clinical study if it's going to be used against COVID-19? Do you remember that? I recall that, yes. Okay, do you recall how long he said it would take to test a drug that's been around for 50 years that costs 35 cents a pill? How long would it take to do a proper clinical study, 15 months. It, it, it said this back in March. It's going to take 15 months to do a proper clinical study. Now, that's on a drug that's been around for 50 years. We know what side effects are. We know everything negative about it. We know what the cost is. We know what the availability is. Now then, what is Bill Gates and Fauci pushing? He wants to vaccinate everybody. And Bill Gates has now come out and says, oh, by the way, since it's RNA, it's going to take multiple vaccinations. So somehow it takes 15 months to study a drug that's been around for 50 years and costs 35 cents a pill. But you're going to be able to approve and test a drug that permanently alters the DNA of every cell in the body, and you're going to be able to do this in two or three months. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> now, there is a clinical word for that. You got any idea what it is? What My clinical word for it, and it may not be the same as yours, I would say retardated. No, it's bullshit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that is absolutely candid bullshit. There is no way, and anybody who takes multiple vaccinations that have only been tested for two or three months that permanently alters their DNA is an absolute idiot. And and Dershowitz says, you don't have the right to refuse it. Really? I thought that's what they made guns for. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of what you're sharing, uh, it kind of ties into, and you alluded to, to it earlier, it's a book, Common Sense 2.0. I had the pleasure of having David Smith from the Morgan Report on my program, and we discussed the, this very time-sensitive book. And again, the title is Common Sense 2.0, and what's the author goes by the pen name Thomas Paine, who, by the way, was the original author of Common Sense written in the 1700s, and it addresses the aforementioned with sound, practical solutions. Why should every American read common sense 
because it's the only book that I've seen that lists not only what the problems are, but what the solutions are. Now, nobody loves a prophet. They want a savior. And that kind of ties into our last discussion when we talked about Cassandra. I, in my view, uh, if you go back and look at any or listen to her, any of our interviews over the years, and I look back at the commentary where people uh, attempted to refute what you were sharing was going to happen. And then you look at today and I, I just wish they would come back and say, hey, you know what? I was wrong and Bob was right. But oh, they, they, they never do that. No, I mean, they never. <laughs> in, 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 in 2011, what I called the top and silver to the day, I got like hundreds of emails telling me how stupid I was. And, and I, I, I sent them all exactly the same response. I said, well, you know, you might be right. I, I, I could be absolutely, totally, 100% wrong. Okay, but here's what you should do. Rather than tell me today that I said something that was wrong yesterday, why don't you write me in a month and mm -hmm. point out how stupid I am? And, of course, none of them ever did. I'm, I'm still waiting to hear from these guys. <laughs> Speaking of the call in 2011, you kind of made a, a similar one here recently. And uh, so, so let's let's switch topics here and discuss gold and silver. Gold recently hit an all-time high. And, Bob, you, were, you sent a warning shot basically last week on a perfectly timed article entitled, Never Confuse Brains with a Bull Market. And that got the attention of a mutual friend that we have in Giant Bandari, and he wanted to find out what compelled you to write this article. Oh, uh, uh, here, here's the deal. Uh, uh, you ever been to an ice hockey game? I never have. Uh, they're kind of interesting. They're fun. I, I go not because I understand ice hockey, because I don't, and I never will. I'm not a Canadian. you got to be a Canadian to understand it. I go <laughs> to see the fights, okay? And unfortunately, the fights used to be a lot better than they are now. They're not very good now. But but uh, one of the, the longtime great uh, hockey players said, you don't skate to the puck. You skate to where the puck is going. And, and I am not skating to the puck. I, I'm trying to figure out where the puck's going. I'll give you a perfect example. We're doing this interview on Friday, and uh, the U.S. dollar has been down 11 days in a row, okay? Now, given that that the odds on any particular day are 50-50 of it going up or going down, that's like uh, two to the 10th the power. That's a lot of, you know, the mm -hmm. odds really against that. But the dollar is actually going up today. It's very predictable. Uh, and, and, and likewise, when silver spikes, it's saying there's got to be a correction. And, and the strange thing is that I could give you 50 gurus in the silver market, and, and they would rather commit adultery than use the word correction. Okay. <laughs> it, it's just... It, they think correction is somehow spelled with four letters. I, I don't think it is. I think it's longer. That's like six or eight or something like that. But uh, <laughs> they, they just cannot admit or say there's going to be a correction. And, and I, I wrote another piece. It'll be out later today. And I said the price action in both gold and silver is absolutely schizophrenic. It, it doesn't know which way to go. Now, I, I absolutely believe we're going to go into hyperinflation. I absolutely believe gold and silver are going to go a lot higher. But I also understand that humans are, are imperfect. At, at, they get a little bullish sometimes, and you need to correct that bullet. So I, I think there'll be a correction. I think we're seeing signs, or certainly seeing signs of it in the gold and silver shares. But it, it's a good thing. You know, when it's over, uh, gold and silver and gold and silver shares are going far higher than anybody can imagine today. You know, not to contradict what you're saying, because I think we're all in agreement that the gold price will be going higher. But your investment thesis has made you fortunes, and that's why I love having you on the program. Share with us, if gold is at an all-time high, and we believe that it's going to go higher, 
Why aren't you buying gold and what metals have your attention and why? Well, because I listen to myself. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it is not a sign of insanity uh, to talk to yourself, okay? It, it is a sign of insanity to listen to yourself, okay? But it's not a sign of insanity to talk to yourself. I have the most interesting conversations that I've been saying for years, you know, if you think bad things are getting bad, Bob, you need to own some gold and silver and platinum and palladium. So it's I did, <clears throat> you know, back in March when everybody was panicking and, and oh my God, the world is ending, silver is below $12 an ounce. I was thinking, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to buy some more. And, and I, I bought a lot of silver and you couldn't buy physical silver because the premiums were too high, but you could buy that silver ETF, which for all practical purposes was exactly the same. And I was really pleased with that. How about platinum? I, I, don't, I don't know anything about platinum. Never mentioned platinum in my entire life and the mere <laughs> fact that the ratio between platinum and gold is the worst it's ever been in history. Uh, now, uh, platinum's cheap, okay? Someday platinum's going to go up. It's going to surprise everybody. Including me. I know everyone is asking this, so I'm going to go ahead and ask the question. Between the two, is there one that you favor a little bit more right now than the other? Uh, after silver corrects. Now, I've got somebody, and actually you would be a really good guy to to help your, your customers. You actually have your thumb on the scale. You know exactly the times to buy and sell. Sorry for interruption, folks, but I do want to remind you I'm a licensed representative for Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments, but we have several options to expand your precious metals portfolio from physical delivery of gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and rhodium, and there is no minimum purchase requirement. We also offer precious metal IRAs and offshore depositories. Give me a call at 855-505-1900 or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com. Now, back to the interview. When everybody's beating the doors down to buy, okay, mm-hmm. you don't want to buy, that's when you want to sell. And when, when the same guys, okay, who bought the stuff at 25 or $26 an ounce are beating the doors down saying, I need to get rid of this crap, uh, that's what I look for. And and there's a place that I'm very close to that stores metal. And, and I tell him, look, you know, when guys call up and they want to sell stuff and you need to move it, I'm a buyer. And uh, I, I think at $16, I, I can't tell you exactly what the sequence was, but silver went below 12. It, it went up to about 16. It went down... 14, and this guy called me up and said, hey, somebody's got a thousand ounce bar of silver and he wants to sell for a 60 cent premium. I said, damn, I'll go. And I bought it. And the crazy thing is, it's not because I'm smart. It's because you have access to better information than I do. Well, I, I share the you know I share the investment thesis that that you've shared with me over the years using the ratios to your advantage and having that discipline because that's a key word here that you haven't referenced but I think we can read between the lines it takes a lot of discipline to do what you're doing and having courage and conviction because everyone seems to want to be a part of the crowd and and as you've referenced in your books you have to be an individual when it comes to investing and that's how you've made these spectacular gains so again thank you for sharing that investment thesis with us. Well, you don't, you don't actually have to be an individual. You can be one of the guys giving money away, okay? Uh, if, if, if you're a bird or, or if you're a lion or if you're a water buffalo or if you're a fish, uh, you want to be with the rest of the school or the rest of the flock. But if you want to make money, you have to learn to think for yourself, first of all, and, and strange enough, if you could figure out what the mob's doing, just do the opposite. 
And that sounds difficult, but it's so damn easy. You know, I was looking at silver with a DSI of 93 uh, a week, 10 days ago, and said, hey, let's get frothy. And, and sure enough, it was getting frothy. But uh, silver is an interesting metal because when it tops, it always does it in exactly the same way. It, it spikes up like 10 or 15 percent in a couple of days, and it comes right back down. But I, I, I give you another thing that's just as effective. The metals market, the, the uh, shares are either very liquid or they're very illiquid. When you're near a top, they're very liquid. When you're near a bottom, they're very illiquid. So I, I put in stupid orders way below the market and I wait for the market to come down to me and the market's telling me, okay, it, it's near bottom. Likewise, when you've got an extremely liquid market, that's the time to take some money off the table. Now, I, I, I don't believe for a minute that I'm some kind of investing genius. I've, I've done very well. But I've got access to a lot of information that, that the average investors don't have. I am in touch with guys like Keith Barry and Quentin Henney on a constant basis, and you can't talk to them without learning a lot. So it's not how smart I am, it's mm -hmm. you know, how smart they are. And, and quite bluntly, you know, the last week or two, it's been a great opportunity to take some money off the table. I've got three or four stocks that are up for 100, 500, 600 percent. The one thing that I'll say is that's going to be across the board fairly soon. Okay, and I'm not talking about next week or next month. We're going to have a, a bull market like nobody listening to this has ever seen before. It's going to make 1979. And 1980 looked like a bunch of puts cats. Well, well, speaking of the junior mining companies, let's start with companies that are affiliated with a very prominent and successful name, and that is none other than Dr. Quentin Henney, beginning with Novo Resources. What can you share with us? Novo wants to do a deal on the Millennium Hill. Quentin has wanted to be in production for 10 years, and one day... Uh, it's going to happen. I, I don't know when. It, it will be an absolute game changer. It is really difficult to do business in Australia, and it takes a lot longer than it should do. But uh, he's on track. Novo is going to be the biggest gold company in the world 50 years from now. Yeah, that, that's a tall statement to make, but... You know, you, you've got the credentials to back that up, I tell you what. <laughs> How well, about, yes, sir? It, in the very first article that I ever wrote, I said that Novo was going to be the game changer that was going to wake up the market, and the stock was going to go up between 10 and 100 fold. And I'm going to tell you, I absolutely nailed that, and things have changed a lot since then. But I, I've been to the pill bear, I, I don't know, six times, seven times. And the gold is there. Yeah, I've been there myself, and the gold is there. And another place that you and I have been to is Irving Resources in Japan. How about Irving? Same thing. Okay. Uh, Keith Barron uh, did a piece, and he was talking about the 23-meter intercept. The pictures are on their website from the last press release. And he said it's the best-looking core he's ever seen. You don't have to believe Quentin Henney, and you don't have to believe me, and you don't have to believe you, but uh, it certainly would be worth listening to Keith Barron. He likes it. And again, uh, because of the virus, things are a lot slower than they should be. But I, I think they're going to come out with results soon, and I think they'll be excellent. You know, and Akiko Levinson, the strategic moves she's been making have just been they've been remarkable. And I still think the market has not recognized the contributions that she's made. It's just been spectacular. So kudos to, to Akiko there. 
the market absolutely does recognize it, and there's something about the shares that everybody is missing. Very okay. close to ninety percent of the shares are in the hands of the top ten shareholders. That is the tightest stock that I have ever seen. There is a little tiny float, and you talk about this company that's got this hundred and fifty, two hundred million dollar market cap and it trades 30,000 shares a day? Are you kidding me? When they hit big time, that, that stock's gonna look like a rocket ship. Yeah, it certainly is, and we're proud shareholders of Irving Resources. How about, let's go to Fiji, let's talk about Line One Metals. They've had some exciting news here recently as well. Well, they hit exactly what, what, what Quentin Henney said. Uh, here's what's funny about Quentin, and virtually nobody understands this. You don't need Quentin to come in and run your entire program for you. Lion One has some great geologists. Uh, Irving has some great geologists. Novo has some great geologists. You need somebody who understands the difference between shit and Shinola, okay? Shinola <laughs> is boot polish, okay? It's dark, but that's what you use to shine shoes with. Quentin comes in and makes a tiny change in the direction that has an incredible impact. Now, when, when I first talked to Lion One, they were talking about the project as being a epithermal alkaline system. That's like talking about a, a Ford Chevrolet. Now, have you ever seen a Ford Chevrolet? I've never seen a Ford Chevrolet. You know? <laughs> yeah, the two don't go hand in hand. Well, I could. But you know why you've never seen one? Well, I guess, well, in simple terms, it's never been assembled together as one. Well, because they don't exist, okay? Yeah. A thermal system is a hot springs, okay? It has a very limited vertical dimension. Might be 100 meters, might be 150 meters. Now, if you get into something like a maze thermal system, which is a hotter fluid system, and it's usually much deeper, uh, they can be eight times as deep as they are long, okay? And, and a thermal system has characteristics, and made the thermal systems have characteristics, and alkaline systems have characteristics. But Fords are Fords, and Chevys are Chevys, okay? You can't have a Ford Chevy because there is no such thing. So the amazing thing is that they're over at Fiji. They're at a mine like 20 miles away in a caldera where they've mined 7 million ounces. They're down to 6,500 feet in the mine. And they're, they were talking about it being an epithermal alkaline system. Well, you can't have an epithermal system at 6,500 feet deep. There is no such thing. And Quentin went in and he talked to Wally, who's been banging his head, keeping that thing going, moving it forward year after year after year after year. And Quentin said, look, all you can do is drill deep, okay? You're just approaching this thing like it's epithermal. Do not use the word epithermal. It is not an epithermal system. It's an alkaline system. Drill deep. So we drill deep, <laughs> he comes up with this incredible, you know, 1,310 meter, or 1,310 gram gold over one foot. Holy cow! You can take yes. a bow torch to that. <laughs> it's astounding. It really is. I don't, uh, I, I had an opportunity to review some of your work, and of course we always post your work there, but uh, you did some great analogies there with just what that grade really means. So it'd be a, a good read for anyone. Uh, we'll post that for you here uh, in the uh, interview for you. Well, it, it, it means $30,000 gold, okay? If you had one cubic foot of that, okay, it's $30,000 a ton. Holy cow, you can't lift the damn thing, but if you could lift it, you'd be rich. 
<laughs> and you and you you referenced uh, Wally. That's uh, the CEO there is Walter Burkhoff, and that's the Tavatu Gold Project there in Fiji. How about New Legacy? Funny thing, it's the same story. Now I didn't know this. Uh, Albert Matter was actually one of our first customers. This is going back nineteen years. Okay, uh, he had this little tiny gold company called Alamos in Mexico. And uh, he came, pitched me, told me the story. I met him, said it sounds good. He advertised for a year or two. And he ended up selling it out and making a ton of money. Okay. Uh, He's a very sharp guy. He had some absolutely brilliant geologists out in Nevada. Now, at the same time, they started uh, working in Nevada he was actually in touch with Quentin, too. And Quentin said, you know, you guys are focused on the east. You should actually go across the fault. You should focus on the west. And Albert's guys didn't agree, and they didn't. So they've been tapping holes there for years, okay? And they're getting lots and lots and lots of sniffs. And they finally started drilling to the west, just like Quentin's been saying for years, and they get far better intercepts. And I believe they have the next major Harlan trend uh, deposit, and and I think the next six months is going to make a giant change. I think they're waiting for some permits. I don't think they can drill until September, but uh, that's going to be another situation that Quentin talking to him for, for a few hours has changed their thinking, and I, I believe it will be in a, a very positive way. You know, sticking with Nevada, one more company that is in the Dr. Quentin Henney uh, portfolio, and that is Envy Gold, and that has Peter Ball as the CEO. What about Envy Gold, sir? Well, that's funny. You ought to, you ought to be talking about British Columbia. Well, that's true. That's <laughs> what with the Exodus Gold you know, Project. And NV Gold, NV was for Nevada, and, and NV Gold had all these Nevada projects, and they've been uh, they they've been tapping into these things for years. I mean, I cannot tell you how much money I have lost on NV Gold. Uh, I bet it placement after placement after placement, they just never went anywhere. And uh, Peter came in a year or so back. Um, and he started looking at things in a different way, and he's really moved the company forward. And, and they've gone from like ten cents to forty something cents uh, in the last six weeks or two months. But they they not only are in Nevada; they got some good projects in Nevada. But they picked up a project in British Columbia, and uh, I I think they'll do very well. How about another proven name, and that is Greg Johnson, and that is, that's, that course, that name is synonymous with the Metallic Group of Companies. Beginning with Metallic Minerals, what can you share with us? Well, here's what's funny. Do you know how, how long I've known Greg Johnson? I think that goes back to the late 90s, does it not, at Novo? Nineteen years. Okay. Yeah. Nova Gold was the first company that I wrote about. Okay, Jake Taylor actually was the guy who discovered them. And he was writing about them when they were 30 cents a share. And the stock actually went down 13 cents a share. And I looked at it because uh, they were generating 13 cents a share in earnings. And the stock was 13 cents a share. I thought, well, that seems pretty damn cheap to me. I wrote about them where, when they were a dollar a share and they doubled. And then I wrote it about them. Uh, six weeks later, and they doubled again. I've known Greg for the longest time. Greg uh, it, it's done something interesting. He hadn't gotten any credit for it yet, but he supervises three different companies. Metallic Minerals is their uh, silver company, and it's up in the Yukon, and uh, it, it's going to be a silver play. I think it will be very effective. Uh, and, and that's adjacent to Alexco there. It's a Brownfields play. Yeah. 
and, and it, how can you go wrong? I mean, you're in a district that took out a billion ounces of silver. Jesus. You ought to be able to find something. <laughs> well, with someone that's proven, and then you go to Montana with Group 10 medals, uh, what, what do you like about Group 10 there? Uh, Group 10 has not gotten the appreciation that it should, which is totally insane. Uh, palladium has has been so much more valuable than I think that it's really worth compared to platinum, and they're they're right next to the Stillwater complex, and they've got half of the deposit. Uh, I I'm shocked that that stock isn't three or four times what what it is now, but uh, it, it'll get there. Yeah, and they're finding rhodium there. You're referring to the Stillwater West and Sabanye purchased the Stillwater a couple of years ago for 2.3 or 2.8 billion. But again, they're adjacent to the Stillwater with the Stillwater West, 25 kilometers, and they found they're finding rhodium as well, seven grams. I mean, it, look at the price of rhodium. My goodness, <laughs> it's just uh, it's let remarkable. Let me let me tell you some. I mean, you want to, you want to get a nosebleed? Look at the difference between bid and ask. I I think I was looking at it a week ago. And it was six thousand dollars bid, nine thousand dollars ask. I went, "Holy cow!" Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one more company in in the metallic group, and that is uh, Granite Creek Copper, and, and they're in the Minto Copper district. There, what do you like about them? Copper. You got it. And and the interesting aspect of that is, I think that uh, we're looking at oxide versus sulfide there, and that really increases the value proposition. And I think it was you that brought it to my attention that you, oh, must have been a year or so ago. You said, Maurice, the world is going to consume more copper in the next 25 years than all of recorded history. So this is a company you got to take a look at. And I just want to step back for a second here. Granite Creek was three cents back in May. They're 10 cents, 12 cents, somewhere in there. Going back to Metallic Minerals, they were 15 cents uh, back in October of 2018. And they're approaching 60 cents here. Yeah, there are some spectacular gains. Uh, I, I would highly suggest if people actually want to make money as opposed to indulging their fantasies, uh, go to Amazon, spend a few bucks, buy my books. Uh, you don't have to buy them because I say they're good. Read the damn review. Okay, because the people who read that book say these are the best financial books I've ever read. The books are excellent. They're cheap. They will absolutely help you make money. And, and you know, all I did was take things that nobody else says, which shocks me, okay, but they're good books. And if you read the books, you will make money. I, I would just, if I may, I would disagree. I don't think they're good books. I think they're exceptional books. I don't benefit financially from it. But ladies and gentlemen, I have benefited financially by reading and applying. And that is it. And it has been life-changing, hands down. The best books on finance. And, and I'm a readaholic in reference to finance. And I can find none better than Bob's books. And that's why we always reference them. Uh, there is no financial gain from me by you purchasing. None. But if you read it and you apply, you'll be smiling you know, just like both of us are. <laughs> All right, we got one more name here, and that's another proven name. That is Tim Termundi, and he has two companies that have your attention. How about Tega Gold, which is a spin-out of Eagle Plains? Uh, Tim Termundi is one of my favorite people. Barbara just loved him. She would have dumped me at heartbeat if he was available. Uh, Tim, Tim's a great guy. Eagle Plains is a prospect generator. It has never gotten the respect that it is due. They got a ton of good projects, and they spun one of the best one off into the gold project, and I can't pronounce it either, but I own some, and I'm a happy camper. Yeah, they're at the, that's the Chico project they have there in Saskatchewan. That's an interesting one, but... Uh, definitely take a look at these names that we've referenced here today. Uh, they are truly 
unique value propositions. Yes, some of them have moved up tremendously, but in my view, uh, you've got to have the discipline like Bob shared is, is know when to sell if you've taken action in the past and then look for an opportunity to continue to add. All right. In closing, sir, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? I'm not certain, but there's some kind of creature that climbs in trees and it climbs onto my roof. And since we don't have lions and tigers here, I'm not particularly worried about it. I would love to know what it is because I wish it would let me sleep. I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, I hear the damp scratching on the roof, and then I think, I wish I had a gun. <laughs> well, you know, could it be a goat? Don't goats go into trees? I think goats climb trees, don't they? I, I, so, so I think you made that up. No, I've seen it. I've seen. I didn't think they could, but uh, because they they have, you know, they don't have claws. But yeah, that I it might have to take a look into that one. He's pretty <laughs> tall trees. <laughs> yeah, damn parachutist again. On- <laughs> All right, last question, sir, and that is, what did I forget to ask? I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out next time. Sounds good. Bob, for someone listening that wants to get more information about your books and your work, please share the website addresses. Uh, 321 Gold, 321 Energy, and Amazon.com. And all I got to do is look up my name. And they're they're good books. I mean, uh, people seem to like them. Well, I certainly do. <laughs> all right. Well, till next time, sir, wishing you the absolute best. Okay. It's good talking to you. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. As a reminder, I'm a licensed representative from Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments, but we have several options to expand your precious metals portfolio, from physical delivery to offshore depositories and precious metal IRAs. Give me a call at 855-505-1900, or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com. Finally, please subscribe to Proven and Probable for mining insights and bullion sales. Subscription is free. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor. 